Okay, it's gonna keep frying and then. There goes the gaffing tape again. <laughs> making BDSM Korean fried chicken. BDSM Korean fried chicken. BDSM fried chicken is not what you think it is. It's a cooking method. I promise it's a cooking method. <laughs> so what it stands for is brine, drudge, double fry, sauce, and masticate. In celebration of 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. I actually hit this number a while back, but I've just been waiting for the YouTube plaque for a very long time. For some reason, I thought that it would just magically arrive, but apparently I needed to fill out a form. And I was actually really upset because I was like, where is this plaque? Because I've been waiting for it for so long and it has been a childhood dream of mine to become a YouTuber, Aww. and this is a huge milestone for me. Okay, so age old question, which do you prefer, flats or drumstick? For a very long time, I had been a huge advocate of flats, but I recently learned more about chicken anatomy, and I found out that I've been lied to. It's really flats, drumettes and drumstick. And I have found out that my favorite piece is actually the drumstick. The drumstick is actually the legs of the chicken and not the wing. And what we've been eating for most of the time when we go out to a wing restaurant, they serve you the wings. Nothing wrong with the wings, but the drumstick on the wings is not the same as the drumstick on the legs. Think about it. A chicken that is assumingly free range, they're not gonna use their wings as much as their legs. And so I love when parts of the meat have the most movement and action from the body because it is just a lot more flavorful. There's a lot more tendons and muscles at work. So I'm done preaching. Let's get to the cutting part. Once you have your thigh and your drumstick, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over. You're, it's basically like your knee. Imagine the chicken's like this. Um, you're gonna find your knee and you're gonna find the chicken's knee, not your knee. You know where your knee is. Uh, you're gonna find the chicken's knee and you're gonna feel for the bone piece. And what you're gonna do, once you feel it, you're gonna give it a crack dislocate its knee, and then say thank you, chicken, for all you have done for us. Take a deep breath and slice right through, just like that. Okay, so we have successfully decapitated our chicken, and we are going to go into the B of the BDSM, which is brining. So in the brining stage, what we're going to create is not your traditional brine, but we're going to create almost like a sludge or like a really thick, goopy mixture that's going to bind with the chicken. So anyways, we're going to go into the mixing bowl with about two cups of buttermilk. And we are going in with this standard mix of uh, two parts MSG, one part sugar, one part salt, and one part pepper. Just, you know, maybe two tablespoons, a little bit more. Go in with some mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, and you can use paprika, um, but I'm using Kashmiri uh, pepper, rice flour. You can use regular flour just to thicken it up a little bit. To the wall of mass creation, we're gonna grab a whisk. Bloop. Once you have your brine ready, we're going to give the chickens a nice bath in the brine. And you know, goal, ideal goal is to overnight it. Um, I don't have that much time. So we're just gonna brine it for an hour um, and then check back in with it. Um, so go in really, massage it, let it sit. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the fridge. 
I don't know what to say other than, look at it, look at it. <laughs> Isn't it big? It's like the size of my chest. Crazy, right? So this actually arrived a year after hitting 1 million subscribers. And, and maybe I can link my, my uh, reaction when the number actually hit, but I thought that they were just gonna mail it to me. But apparently you need to fill out a form with your information so they know where to send it to you. Uh, so I just, just I just filled out that form uh, recently and and got this uh, got this pack. Um, so let's get into it. <sighs> okay. Whoa! Oh my gosh! It's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Holy crap! I don't know if you can catch it, but I actually have goosebumps. I didn't know I was gonna react like this. That's crazy. We have a little letter. The letter says. You did it. One mission, one channel, and one more thing. One million subscribers. Congratulations. Signed, Neil Mohan, uh, YouTube CEO. It's like a little baby. Wow, look at that. Incredible, right? It's made out of real gold. Not really. All right, let's put it on the wall. Okay, um, I don't think I'm gonna put it on right now because it's a little bit heavy and I need to do some DIY. So I'm just gonna put it here for now. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, so uh, the chicken's been marinating for a while. Let's get to the D of BDSM chicken, which is the dredge and the double fire. So for the dredge, this is the part where I feel like a lot of controversial things happen in terms of like what actually goes into the mix. Some people use all-purpose flour, some people use corn starch, some people use potato starch, some people use rice starch. I feel like you can use whatever you want. This is what we have here. 40% all-purpose flour, APF, and 60% cornstarch. What we're gonna add to it is some seasoning so that uh, it tastes good. So we got the MSG, pepper, sugar, and salt, garlic powder, onion powder, and some of the paprika. Now we're gonna mix it. There is a very special equipment that you need when you do this process. You will need one brown paper bag for this next step. What you're gonna do is grab one of the pieces of chicken, put it in the flour, drudge it along, make sure it's nice and coated. Okay, look at that, nicely coated. And you're gonna drop it in the bag. And you're gonna finish coating the rest of this. And I'll tell you step two and why you should use the bag. So with all of that in, we're gonna take the residual flour that we have and we're gonna pour everything into the bag. It gets messy, but don't worry, we'll, we'll clean it at the end. Trust the process. So once your chicken is in the bag, what you're gonna do is you are going to take the bag, close it, and we're gonna shake it. Make sure to shake it one million times for one million subscribers. Oh, I guess this is a good moment to say uh, like and subscribe if you haven't for our next million. Okay, set this aside, clean up your station. We're gonna get the oil ready and we are ready for double frying. Okay, so now we're in the double fry portion of the video. We are going to um, fry it once so that it cooks and then we're gonna fry it a second time and there's a very specific reason why we're doing that. I'm gonna explain to you later. In the first fry, you want the temperature a little bit lower so that you don't burn your chicken. Get your chicken out of your brown bag. Look at that, look at that. This is kind of a little bit of what it should look like. Okay, so very important, do not throw it in. You will hurt yourself. You wanna just 
lovely, drop it in. A lot of you might think that this is ready and it looks ready and actually it is ready and you might be wondering why we are double frying, why are we going through all that extra effort? Well, it's simple. So much of frying is about removing the excess moisture because moisture is the enemy to crispiness. And what's happening right now is that the, the chicken is in Shavasana, it is resting, it is breathing out all of that excessive moisture from inside. And where is it? Where is that moisture going? It's immediately being trapped by the crispiness. So if you let it sit for a few minutes, it's actually not gonna be very crispy. It's gonna be very soggy. And the reason why we double fry is getting that moisture from the crispy part out of the way so that it is extra crispy when you bite into it. And that is the art of the D in BDSM. Okay, it's gonna keep frying and then... There goes the gaffing tape again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just do this. How about that? One thing you'll know about me is I'm really bad at uh, IKEA furniture building, handy things in general, not my strong suit. Frying chicken, on the other hand, pretty good at, at it, I'd say. Okay, so while the chicken is resting and the moisture is coming out and we're waiting for our double fry, let's make the sauce and the garnish that will go into the um, Korean fried chicken. I'm going to make the garnish. What I like to do is I like to add a little bit of scallions in there because it's so good. We're gonna use the tip of the scallion. I'm gonna put it in cold water because the cold water is what will make it curly. It's time for the S in BDSM. We're making the sauce. Okay, with Korean fried chicken sauce, yes, there are traditional gochujang based sauce for a recipe, but I feel like you guys don't need to do all that. You can put whatever hot sauce you like and, and put a you know binder in it like honey. I'm just trying to use up more of my ingredients before I leave uh, the apartment. And so today we're gonna do a spicy honey sauce. We're going to do a honey that I got from Portugal. It's from the highest mountain in Portugal. So if you guys know what it is, it's um, uh, Mount Estrela is the highest point. And I, I got it on the top of that mountain. I love, love, love this hot sauce. It's not sponsored, but I love this hot sauce. It is the Bulldog hot sauce. Um, people, People get it from the ramen packets, but I just buy this and I just literally douse it. It's so spicy, but it's so good. Um, I'm like at its last, you know, amount of it, but we're gonna we're gonna use it for this uh, Korean fried chicken. So medium high heat. We're gonna pour in as much honey as this jar will give, and make sure. Ooh, give that. Let me give it its moment in the sun. With the honey heating up, I'm just gonna add what I think would be a good amount of bulldog sauce. Ooh, and that's good. The sauce is good, I'm gonna turn it off, turn this back on, I'm gonna set it aside for when our chicken is ready. We're back to our chicken that has been sitting out for about 30 minutes to an hour. With double fry, you know, what's so nice about it is you can really put it in the fridge and it'll be perfectly fine. In fact, a lot of restaurants do that. They'll make a gigantic batch of fried chicken and just leave it in the fridge. And when it is ready for service, you can just heat it back up, get the moisture out, and it is ready to go. And you can tell, like, uh, it's not as crispy as when it was before. Um, well, maybe you can't tell, but I'd like to believe it is. So we're gonna put it in. And the temperature that you want for your second fry is going to be much higher than the temperature that you started out with because you're frying for a short amount of time. If you leave it in there for too long, the chicken is going to just be really oily. So you would just want to fry it for like three to five minutes top. All right, we're coming out. 
we are pulling you out. Look at that. Now that we have fried up the chicken, we're gonna sauce it up and we're gonna masticate. So the chicken is ready for the S and BDSM. We're saucing it up and I just made the honey bulldog sauce. You can toss it in the sauce, but I like to paint it on. And then we're gonna plate it and we're gonna eat it. Look how nice and bubbly that looks. And we're gonna paint it on. Officially the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to masticate. I'm literally drooling. So, oh my God, look at that. Look at that piece of chicken. Mm. Okay, ready? The best form of celebration. It's crunchy, it's <laughs> spicy, it's very spicy. Um, and it is what I eat when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I just want to eat something. You can definitely meal prep this if you want. Um, yeah, go out there, go make it, do your thing. I just want to say thank you again so much for watching and for supporting me through the past two to three years. I think that one million is such a big number and sometimes you know you get you think of things as numbers but what's crazy is there's a million people behind each of the subscribers and for me that is just incredible that you want to be here you want to watch and you want to learn and you want to connect with other people so thank you so much and i'll see you next time goodbye